Namaste. This is students. This is professor. So, professor and students are one. Now, for a wonderful journey of Indian Contract Act 1872. Therefore, Namaste. Friends, we are going to start now the Indian Contract Act of 1872. Now, henceforth, this will be referred as a chapter. So, it is a chapter 1 and it will have several modules. But before we start with a wonderful journey of Indian Contract Act 1872, let us first understand the underlying principle of Honorable Constitution of India and Honorable Indian Judiciary, which must always be logged in your mind. And that is Satya Me Vajete, which means truth alone wins, alone, nothing else. So, truth alone wins. And with that, we can start now with our first module that is ML1. Now, what is ML? Mercantile Law. So, it is a Mercantile Law 1. And our first module is Introduction to Law. Because this is a new subject, you are doing it for the first time, that is Law. So, let us start with it now. But before we start with Mercantile Law, two points about the law must be zipped in our mind, the two most important point before we start with mercantile law. And the very first point is what is law? That is the first thing. The law means the conduct. It is the rules and regulations to regulate the conduct of the people at large. Because if the conduct of the people is regulated, is governed, is good, is rational, then automatically we will have peace in the society. And when there is a peace in the society, we will have stability. And when we have stability, we will have growth. And when we have growth, we will have development in the society. And that is what is a very civilized society. So the conduct of the people must be regulated. To regulate that conduct of the people, we need a guardian, we need a parent called as law. That is the first thing. And the second important point about the law that must be very much clear in your mind is why should we be aware of the law? What is the need? Because of a maxim, ignore intia juris non excuta. This is a universal maxim, okay, applicable everywhere throughout the world. What does this Latin English maxim stands for? It stands for ignorance to the law is not an excuse. You do not know the law, that cannot be a good defense. You should be aware of the law. See this, a person is riding a bike without a license. And when the cop catches him, he says, Sorry, I didn't know that I must have a license. Will the cop allow him to go? Definitely no. Because ignorance to the law is not an excuse. We are the elite masses. Even the tribals living in the villages and all uh, those uh, forest area are aware of the law. They do not rob. They do not kill. They do not do any theft, decoity. Why? Because they know the law is going to punish them. So, we should be aware of the law to which we are subjected to. Okay. So, when we got these two points about the law zipped up in our mind, that is, what is law? Conduct. Should we be aware of the law? Yes, because of this maxim. Ignore in juris, non executa. Now, we can proceed with a CPT mercantile law. Your CPT mercantile law comprises of three acts. The very first one is Indian Contract Act of 1872. The second act is the Sale of Goods Act 1930. And your third act is the Indian Partnership Act 1932. Let us now start with MCQs. That is multiple choice questions. And here comes the first one. Awareness of law is mandatory as per dash maxim. Now, what y'all can see? A question, four options. 
and one more thing. What is that one more thing? Tell me. Near the number, you can see a student is sitting. Three things in that student. The student is smiling, amazingly seeing the question and the hands is like this. Which means what? Smiling because the question is easy now. And amazing with the eyes because it looks very wonderful. And hands up means I know the answer. And that is exactly what you are. All right, now come to the answer. Which is that maxim? Yes. Ignorantia juris non excuta. Ignorance to the law is not an excuse. You should be aware of the law. All right. And here comes the second one. Law intends to regulate what? Come on, conduct of the people? Yes, sir. Human behavior? Sir, it's a conduct? Yes, sir. Both? Yes, sir. So that's the correct answer. C1. Because conduct of the people means the behavior. How you behave in your day-to-day -day life. So that's what law intends for. And we have the third one. Section 2B defines promise. But where 2B means what? Because it's a legal terminology. So your pronunciation must be correct. So the correct answer is B, where 2 is a section and B is a clause. So we are going to say what? Section 2, clause B defines promise. Namaste.